Hi, welcome back to Zanelle's Teacher Apple. Today we have an exciting topic that I'm sure most of us teachers just can't wait to talk about each year. Um, when we come together with our teacher partners or with our administration, and that is data. And we're gonna talk about using data to actually drive our instruction. Now that the holidays are over and we're approaching the middle of the school year, we're getting into the meat of our instruction. We're trying to um, now look at what students have learned and see what else that they need to continue learning so that they can be successful by the end of the school year so that we can prepare them for the next grade level. Using data will help us achieve those goals and it will help us drive our instruction and give us direction on where we want to take the rest of our school year. Looking at skills previously taught and skills that we need to make sure we cover before testing and ultimately the end of the school year is a great place to start. When you're looking at the skills that you haven't taught, you need to pretty much come up with a game plan on how you're going to make sure that you meet these skills to ensure that students are successful. Ask yourself, how can I fit the skills that I need to teach in while at the same time spiraling skills that I've already taught. Easy, minimize the skills that you need to reteach. Take a hard look at the data and think about what skills did students struggle the most on, the majority of your class. We don't need to reteach every skill that we've taught already this year. We need to look at the data and see what skills do the majority of your students need? What really needs to be spiraled back around? What can you take time out of your day to go over to ensure that the majority of your students have mastered these skills? That is where data comes in. And we're gonna talk about a few ways to incorporate data to ensure that it drives your instruction. The first step in preparing students is to identify your data source. So where are you going to get your evidence from? Where are you going to gather your data from? What tool or resource are you going to use that's gonna then help you analyze and drive your instruction for later? There's so many assessments out there on the internet. Um, there's several different assessments, benchmarks that you can use. Uh, you can also use the curriculum program that your school currently uses. I typically like to use a program called CARS that measures student growth by grade level, but if I wanted to differentiate, I can always use a different grade level to ensure that I get accurate results for all my students. For my higher level kids, I like to go a grade level up and give them passages that are a little bit harder. And my struggling students, I always put them at their level and give them passages that they can be successful at. But I like to use this program because it breaks down the skills and students are able to read the question and know exactly what skill is tied to each response. So it's, just, it's not just for me as a teacher, to know what skills they're lacking, but students are able to go back and do self-monitoring as well. And then it'll open their eyes to what skills that they need to work on because they will eventually see the trends throughout the uh, passages that they receive. Once you gather the materials that you're gonna use, you need to make sure you look at it and pick assessments and tools that are gonna fit for your students. If you wanna pick things that are at your student's level, things that they're gonna be comfortable with, you don't wanna give them um, questions that are too challenging and then you don't want to um, give them questions that do not push them to that next level. So you have to know your students. You have to know their strengths and weaknesses. Without knowing that, it's almost impossible to kind of measure their growth and get an idea of where they are at. I also encourage you to look back at your own notes. Throughout the year, I continue to use anecdotal records in my teaching on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. There are just some students that 
I am more successful in teaching because I continuously monitor them through my own note taking. And then when it's time for me to put them in small groups and really analyze the data, I have my notes to refer back to. This tool I call a daily learning target sheet and I keep it on my clipboard at all times. I also like to use exit slips and quick assessments um, and quick do nows to pretty much help me figure out where my students are. And these are just quick checks that'll be used later on to make sure that they mastered what was taught that day in class or if I still need to reiterate some things to uh, a specific group of students. The next thing I wanna talk about is finding time. You might look at this and say, oh, I don't have the time. I don't have time to go back and reteach skills. I don't have time to pull small groups and use data to basically tell me where I need to go next. But I'm here to tell you that you have to find time. You have to find time to fill in those gaps because if you keep moving and those gaps aren't filled, then it's going to come out in their progress. It's going to reflect in their progress eventually. And it's going to be a reflection of you and your teaching. So taking the time now is going to save you time later on. I like to distribute these tools, these assessment tools that are going to help me figure out where my instruction is going to go next in the morning. Um, it's the best time to meet your students where they are. They are fresh. The day has just started. They're a little bit more eager to learn as opposed to it being in the middle of, day, of the day, after recess, after lunch, where they are kind of checked out and looking forward to the end of the school day. Getting this task done early on is ultimately going to help you analyze the data a lot faster and see where you can fit it in and start using it later on in the day. The next thing you need to do is then analyze the data. So this is a process within itself. So it is a tedious process, but it's going to save you more time later on. Looking at the data is going to really give you an idea of how many reteach groups you are going to create and how many skills that you have to hit on to ensure that your students are successful. As I stated before, if the majority of your class fail to gain proficiency on a specific skill, then you know right away from looking at the data that this might not be a small group instruction. This might be a whole group instruction. And then students that have already mastered it, if it is just a handful of students, you can give them some extended work that is going to help um, them build critical thinking skills. You don't want to leave those students out. You want to make sure that you are always pushing them to that next level. And at the same time, you're still hitting the skill so to ensure that students that haven't mastered it yet are on their way to proficiency. Analyzing data is the driving force in our instructional planning. If we take the time to know our students' strengths and weaknesses when it comes to analyzing this data, it'll be much easier because things will start coming into place and the puzzles will start being fit together and it will all make sense for us. Too often we kind of catch things without really knowing what the data shows but then when you match it up with daily progress in class and then data from an assessment that students took they always find a way to come together and then it all clicks for the teacher and we ultimately want to make sure that it clicks for our students. Analyzing the data and organizing reteach groups and trying to find time to have these groups uh, organized and taking place in your classroom might seem like an extra step, but it's an extra step that's going to save you time later on. It's an extra step that's going to help you expand your own instructional practice. It's an extra step that is going to enhance your student progress and knowledge towards whatever skills you're teaching. And it's a necessary step. It's necessary to teaching. It's necessary to learning. And it's so worth it in the end. The final step in this progress, the final step in this process is to make 
instructional changes. So now that you have found some time, now that you have gathered the data and you analyze it and you organize groups, you have to make changes to your instructional schedule. You have to plan and have a concrete plan in place and know exactly what direction you want to take that plan. And ultimately, your whole your whole class, all your students. Um, one way to do this is to take something as simple as your bell ringer each day. Maybe you want to differentiate your bell ringer where certain students get bell, rings that, bell ringers that are related to certain skills that they need. While other students get bell ringers that are related to a skill that you are currently teaching. And this way you're ensuring that each skill is being taught with beyond each student. So if it's a bell ringer and you haven't gotten to a specific skill and students that are working on spiral skills, they will eventually get whole group instruction because you're going to use that during your reading time or during your math time. I also like to pull small groups during bell time. Bell time, bell ringers usually last about 10 minutes. This is a quick time to do quick dips. I'll pull about three to four students throughout that time one-on-one and I'll do a quick dip question with them. It'll be one question and then they answer it and then it gives me some type of data and I'll do this every single day with specific students and different skills. And then I have my daily learning target sheet that's going to help me track these skills each day to really see if students are getting it. Is this quick dip moving them forward? Is it creating some type of progress in their um, skill level? Is it being used effectively? Pulling students each day ensures that students are making gains. You can even use um, your guided reading time or your guided math centers or math group time to have your own group to zone in each day to work on specific skills. Whether it's the skill that you're currently teaching or skills that you are spiraling, you want to make sure that you are continually doing this each and every day. At first, um, you may feel like this is complicated because it is a big change. It may be a change in the way that you organize your math groups or your reading instruction or your center time or your whole group instruction. You're going from whole group to small group and individual instruction. But ultimately, change is inevitable. And as teachers, we have to learn how to adapt to that change. We are continuously changing and so are and so are our students. So being open-minded to change is only going to expand our own instructional practice. While it is important to move on with instruction at this time during the school year because you want to make sure that you hit all the skills, especially unfortunately before testing, it's still important that you continue to spiral those skills that students continue to struggle with quick assessment tools it doesn't always have to be a standardized test or a benchmark it could be a quick dip exit slips um bell ringers anything that reinforces skills use it to your advantage use it to help your students use it to help you figure out what direction your instruction needs to go this way you are ensuring that you're you're working towards filling in those gaps and we can only do that if we have a clear understanding of what those gaps are a clear understanding of what each individual student needs and you can only get this through your gathering of data and then that is how you take it to move your instruction forward to drive your instructional practice and in order to ensure that our students are learning and that they're successful change is inevitable and that change starts with the data where can they change where can we change where could our teaching go so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed those practices um, and ways that you can use data to drive your own instruction. If you liked what you see, please like, comment below, subscribe. We would love to hear from you. From my teacher apples to yours, have a wonderful day.